Hello, this is uh, the Lab 9 pre-lab lecture, Introduction to Organic Chemistry. Uh, perhaps you've done this in the lecture already, so this will be a review for you. But if not, no problem, you can play this video over and over and over again. So organic chemistry is the study of any carbon-containing compounds. This is true for about 98% of the cases. There are some instances that you don't uh, that are not considered organic, where they're considered inorganic. Those are things such as carbon dioxide, uh, carbonate. Those are not organic, even though they contain carbon. But the majority are carbon-containing compounds, are organic uh, compounds. So they generally have a low melting point, uh, boiling point. They are flammable. Um, they don't, they're not soluble in water, so if you have oil, which is an organic compound in water, you see there are two different levels. You see the oil floating on top, and they're mostly covalent compounds. And perfect examples, you go to the gas station, um, they're very flammable, the gas is there at the gas station. Uh, you go there and uh, the minute you pump up the gas, you can see uh, vapor starting to form already because they're very volatile. So, you remember this from uh, Vesper and from Lewis structures. Carbon has four bonds. The shape is a tetrahedral. When you have uh, four hydrogens attached to the carbon, carbon should always have four bonds. Um, a hydrocarbon, as the name suggests, is hydrogens combined with carbon. So if they're all single bonds, these are all single bonds. These are all single bonds. We say it is a saturated hydrocarbon. Again, only contains carbon and hydrogen. This is an example of ethane. Uh, we'll talk about later why it's called ethane. But uh, ethane has two carbons. And as I said earlier, each carbon has to have four bonds. So this carbon has four bonds, one, two, three, four. And this is the same thing for the other carbon. It has uh, one, two, three bonds, four bonds connected to this carbon. The point I wanted to show is that we have something called a condensed structure and an expanded structure. And both of these are identical, except in the condensed structure, we do not show the connection between the carbon and the hydrogens uh, versus the expanded form, we show all the connections. Uh, alkane. So alkane means that all the carbons are singly bonded. There are no triple bonds or double bonds. It's important here to learn this uh, nomenclature, the way we name. So if there's one carbon in your structure, we use the term meth. If there's two carbons, we say eth. If there's three carbons, we say prop. And if there's four carbons, we say but. And you know the rest, we will count up to 10. You know the rest, five is pent, six is hex. I'll write this down, five is pent, six is hex. Hex seven is hept. Eight, you should be talking with me. Eight is oct. Nine is nona, non. And ten is dec, decade, dec. So if we had something as such as methane, so methane would be one carbon, and they're all single bonds. This would be, these are H's, these are, this is methane, and this is in the expanded form. In the condensed form of ethane, it would be CH4. So here again, there's a nicer picture, it says, the prefix, meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, etc. 
and the corresponding condensed formulas. Um, they also show the molecular formula here for the corresponding condensed formula. So in your class and in the lab, 95% uh, of your task will be, able, will be to name the compound or draw the compound. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of reactions you have to be familiar with as well, but the majority is you have to name the compound or draw the compound. So here it says give the names of each of the following compounds. The first one contains, these are all condensed structures. The first compound has two carbons. So we say F and they're all single bonds. So let me draw the expanded form. Carbon, remember carbon has four bonds. So H, 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 H. So C2H6, this is ethane. The next one is propane, because there's three carbons, one, two, three, and then all single bonds, so propane. And the next one is hexane, six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, all single bonds, so we say hexane. Question here is, write the condensed structural formula of butane. So I believe it's already written for you here. Um, so again, butane has four carbons, one, two, three, four for but, and they're all single bonds. This carbon here has three hydrogens attached. This one, the second carbon here has two hydrogens attached. It should be a hydrogen up here, hydrogen above and below. We do not attach three hydrogens because Carbon has four bonds always, so one bond, two bond, three bond, four bonds. And as pointed out earlier, this is the difference between an expanded form and condensed form. I use this as the condensed form, and your textbook uses this, but if you look online, some textbooks use this as the condensed form. So for, uh, let's say for propane, they would write it out like this. CH3, propane has three carbons, CH2 and CH3. However, in your textbook, and it's perfectly fine, you can show the connections between the carbon. So, so there's a third form that we need to be familiar with. We know the condensed form, where you just show the connections between the carbon. We have the expanded form, where you connect all the carbons, you connect all the hydrogens, you show those connections. And the third form is the skeletal form. And here for butane, if you recall, butane is four carbons. So here's one, I'll just write one here, two, three, four. So each one of points of intersection are considered carbon. And the endpoints have a carbon. This one, hexane, has six. Hex is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as an exercise, I'll ask you for the hexane, how many hydrogens are in total? I'll give you guys a second, or you can pause the video and try. Um, hexane will have, well, let's count, uh, three on the left, five, three here, plus two, plus another two, plus another two, plus another two, and plus three. So five, seven, nine, 11, and 14. Hexane has 14 hydrogens, okay? Again, we have three on the left and the right edges uh, because there needs four bonds for the carbon. And single bonds here, you can rotate them freely as we'll show in the next slide. You can uh, rotate carbons freely. You can rotate single bonds freely. This again is, if you remember, the name of this compound is uh, butane because it has four carbons uh, in the structure. So as I said, because then you can rotate things freely, all of these structures are the same. I'll repeat, all of these structures at the bottom are the same and they're all butane. So you can pause the video and try this on your own. 
it says draw the condensed structure of A. Well, let's name it. Um, let's question C. The first one here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's heptane. The question is, let's write the condensed form. So again, you can pause and try this on your own. You can write CH3, I'll do this, CH2, CH2, CH2. We need seven of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, three. So based on our way we just been showing you, you're right. I should connect everything. So I should connect the carbon. There should be a connection there, a connection there, a connection, a connection, a connection, and a connection. So this would be the condensed form of heptane. And what is the molecular form? The molecular form would be we have C7, H, how many hydrogens we count? 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 16. Draw the condensed structure of pentane and nonane. I'll do the pentane. It's going to be CH3. We need 5. Remember, pent means 5. CH2. CH2, CH2, and CH3. So again, the pent means five, and ain means they're all single bonds. So every uh, word and the syllable has a particular meaning. And non-ain, I won't draw, but it is nine carbons. So now we introduced cycloalkane. Cyclo means it's a ring. So will you form a ring? Okay, so again, we know alkanes. Anes mean they're all single bonds. Now we've added to our nomenclature. Cyclo means it forms a ring. So this example here, cyclopropane. Cyclo, you know, prop means three carbons. Ane means they're all single bonds. And now we added this word cyclo, meaning they're all connected in a ring. So this is the condensed form of cyclopropane. There's three carbons, one, two, three, and they're all single bonds. The skeletal formula here, there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, carbon here. And for cyclopropane, there's a total of six hydrogens. So from your textbook, this is the cyclo propane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane, skeletal form. So here I'll let you guys try on your own so you can pause the video. But it says name the following alkanes. So here we have four carbons. So it would be but, but stands for four carbons and then ane. So butane, they're all single bonds. The next one, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So oct for eight and ane, because they're all single bonds. The next one, these are skeletal structures. So this one would be, there's four carbons, one, two, three, four, these would be cyclo, because it's a ring, cyclobutane, the next one, there are six carbons and in a ring, so cyclohexane, and in the last one, cyclo. Pentane. 
So when you're studying for your exam, I mean, the good way to do this is, I mean, I usually tell the class, if you want to check if 1 plus 2 equals 3, you would cover, you would do the reverse and check that 3 minus 2 equals 1. So that's the same kind of uh, philosophy I tell my students. What you would do if this was a question on exam, you would, for instance, if they ask you for this last one here, which is cyclopentane, I would write cyclopentane out like I just did. And then I would cover the question with my hand, so I cover this, and see if I'm able to draw cyclopentane. If I'm able to draw cyclopentane and get back the original picture from the question, then I know I've done it correctly. Instead of going, instead of trying to draw the picture, instead of trying to name the picture, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 times, see if you're going in the right direction, just go backwards and see if you can do the reverse, and that's your check to see if you got the right answer. Uh, as I said, alkanes, um, they're all single bonds. We also have something called substituents. So if we, in this case, we know this is butane, but that's not the case for this one. We have to look, I'll talk to you uh, in a second, uh, the instructions, but you have to find the longest chain. This is the longest chain, or you can say this is the longest chain made up of three carbons. So if you have the longest chain, we call this one a branch or substituent. Okay, so I'll repeat. We have the longest chain, so you have to put your pen or pencil down and see what the longest chain you can make without lifting up your pencil to connect all the carbons. In this case, we have the longest chain being uh, three carbons. So why is this important? So anything that's a branch or a substituent, we have to change the ending from ane to il. Okay, I'll repeat. If we see a branch, we have to change the ending from ane to il. So in this case, as I said, you have to find, let's look at this example on the right. In this case, you have to find the longest chain. Here's the longest chain, four carbons. So if it's four carbons, we will write butane. And then we have a branch here that's connected to the longest chain. So if it's a branch to the longest chain, um, how many carbons are in this long in this chain? It's one carbon, so we write meth. And we have to change the number to ill, the ending to ill. This is called methyl butane, and we also have to identify where this branch lives. So we call this one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. This would be called two methyl butane because the branch lives on carbon two. You might ask, well, why don't we name it one, two, three methyl butane? Uh, we don't do that because in organic chemistry, we want to have the lowest possible numbers in our naming. So from we go from right to left, it's going to be 2-methyl-butane. The next uh, example, we have the longest chain is four carbons. So the longest chain is four carbons, and we have two branches on carbon 2 and carbon 4. This would be called although it's a little bit redundant to say, but this would be called two, three. Oh, sorry, first we write the longest chain. It's butane, it's the longest chain, four carbons. And there are two branches on carbon two and three. This is a new term, we would say the word di, because there's two methyl groups. So each branch is made up of one carbon, so we say meth, and il, because they're branches. So let's go through the whole naming. Ain, because the longest chain is single bonds. But, because the longest chain has four carbons. Il, there are some branches. Those branches are made up of one carbon, so meth. There are two of them, di, and they live on carbon two and three. 
So it's a bit redundant, I think, to call it dimethyl because you already know there are two of them on two and three, but the nomenclature we have to use is to express the number using, you know, di, tri, and we also have to say where they live on carbon two and three. Uh, so as I just said, for this example, you don't have to read the steps, the longest chain, you can say, I'll make it a bit less straightforward, it's five carbons, that's the longest chain, or you can say this is the longest chain, but let's use this yellow one as the longest chain, and there's a branch that lives here. So we would go, although the bottom picture uh, says a bit different, we can still name it one, two, three, four, five, and we go from right to left and not left to right because we want the branch to be on the lowest number. This would be called two methyl, two methyl, Okay. So yes, 2-methylpentane. Let's go through the reasoning again. Ane means they're all single bonds. Pent means there's five carbons in the longest chain. Il means there's a branch somewhere and there's one carbon on that branch made up of one carbon. And where does that branch live? It lives on number two. The next example here is 2-bromopentane, the longest chain. And let's number it for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's a branch here, bromine, we'll talk later. Anytime there's a halogen, we say we change the ending to O. So chlorine will go to chloro. Iodine will go to iodo. So 2 bromo pentane. So two more examples you can try. Um, this one would be 3 iodo 2 methyl hexane. Again, if this was on the exam, I would cover the structure and I write the name and I try to draw the structure. But each, again, each syllable has a meaning. Ain, all single bonds. Hex, the longest chain, here's the longest chain. Six carbons, so hexane. Il means there are branches. There's a branch here on carbon two. There's a branch on carbon three. So there's a branch that's made up of one carbon, so we say two methyl, it lives on carbon two. We don't say iodine, we say iodo, because it's a branch, and that branch lives on number three. So you might ask, why is it not 2-methyl-3-iodohexane, we have to write 3-iodo first because in our alphabet the I comes before the M. So we must write 3-iodo-2-methyl-hexane. Uh, we do not take into consideration the di and tri in our alphabet. So I'll repeat, we don't take into account di and tri, we only look at the uh, names iodo and methyl. The next example, the longest chain is six carbons. So we write hex. They're all single bonds. There are two branches, one on carbon two, one on carbon three and two. So we write two, three, dimethyl hexane. So I, I can't stress to learn this. Uh, you really just have to try on your own, meaning that it's not good to have the answers in front of you. It's best to have the question and for you to try, usually with a pencil and paper, to see if you can draw the structure. So pause the video and try this. If we come back, we have here the longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the longest chain, so we have to write hexane, which we did. Uh, two, four, two bromo. So there's a branch here on carbon two. There's a branch here on carbon four. So we would name it one, two, three, four, 
five, six. Some of you might have thought that this is the longest chain. Uh, that's not the case. The longest chain again is six carbons, not five. So the name would be 2-bromo because the bromine lives on carbon 2 and then 4-methylhexane. Uh, this branch lives on carbon 4. The next one, 3,5-dichloro-3-ethylpentheptane. Again, the longest branch, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, or you can say also perfectly valid, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't go we do not go one, two, three, etc. the other way because our branches, we want the least numbers. So we want three, three. We don't want five, five for our branches. We want the lowest possible numbers to add up. So this would be three, five. There's a branch here. There's a branch here. And there's a branch here. So the branches will be 3, 3, and 5, 3, 3, and 5. There are two chlorines. There are two chlorines, so we say 3, 5, dichloro. And on this branch, on the bottom, it's made up of two carbons, so we say ethyl. So we say 3, 5, dichloro, 3, ethyl, heptane. So now we do the reverse. Now we're given the, um, do we are asked to draw the structures. Okay, so we know there are three ways. There's a condensed way, there's an expanded way, and there is a skeletal way. I like the skeletal way. It's the fastest way uh, to draw, but if they ask you on an exam, you have to be able to draw the three distinct ways. But if they don't ask, the skeletal way is perfectly fine. This example here, um, five carbon, longest chain is one, two, three, four, five. And it's the branch lives on two, two, four. So two, two, four, tri. Tri means there's three of the same and there's methyl. And pentane is the longest chain. So let's draw the condensed uh, structural formula for three bromo. 3-bromo-1-chlorobutane. You can cover the answer in the bottom right corner. You can pause and try on your own. You first start with the butane. Let's draw that. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And there's a branch on and let's number them. One, two, three, four to help you out. You don't have to do this, but it helps to number. On the first carbon, there's a chlorine, Cl. And because we've added a bond, we have to remove this three. It now becomes two. So that carbon has four bonds. So one chloro and then three bromo. One, two, three. Here, we should have a Br. Because we've added a bond, we have to remove this two and keep it a single one so that the carbon has four bonds. So this would be 3-bromo-1-chloro-butane. I'm sorry, 3-bromo-1-chloro-butane. And that matches here on the bottom. Uh, you could have drawn, the question you might ask, can you draw the Br up here, connect it up there instead of the bottom. Yes, perfectly fine because we said single bonds, uh, they rotate freely. Unsaturated hydrocarbons means there is a double bond. 
So if we recall from Vesper, here in this case we have two carbons. The form is a trigonal planar. If you remember, this carbon is trigonal planar, this carbon is trigonal planar. It has three bonds and no lone pairs. The angle is 120 degrees. But unsaturated hydrocarbons means there is a double bond associated with it, or a triple bond. Alkyne means there is a triple bond. Alkene, I think I didn't say it in the previous slide, um, means that there is a double bond. So alkene is a double bond, and alkyne is a triple bond. This is an example of an alkyne. It's 180 degrees. It's linear. And again, each carbon has four bonds. So please tell me what kind of hydrocarbon it is, whether it's an alkene, alkyne, or alkane. We look at the first one. It's an alkene. Why? Because we have a double bond here. The next one is an alkane. All single bonds. The next one is an alkyne because it has a triple bond. And the last one is an alkene because it has a double bond. So naming alkenes and alkynes. Let's go back to the alkane. This is our ethane because it has two carbons and they're all single bonds. The next one, ethene, we change the ending to ene because it has a double bond. And the next one, ethyne, this has a triple bond and it still has two carbons, so we say this is ethyne. Um, you don't have to read, but you can pause to read. But again, you have to find the longest chain that contains the double bond or the triple bond and then you associate branches based off that longest chain. Again, that contains the double bond or the triple bond. And you also have to identify where the double bond, where the triple bond lives, unless it's on the first carbon, which we'll go through some examples. So in this case, we need to find the longest chain that has a double bond. So in this case, I've done it for you. Uh, the longest chain is in orange here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, because we need to have to contain the double bond. So we identify where the double bond lives. So first we write hep hept because there's seven carbons in the longest chain. We say ene because there's a double bond there and that double bond lives here on carbon one, one heptene and then there's a branch here that contains three carbons. So we say prop is three carbons, il is a branch and that branch lives on carbon four. So this is called four propyl one heptene. Some textbooks, instead of one heptene, you can write hept one ene as well. The next one, find the longest chain that has the triple bond. So in this case, there's a triple bond that lives here. We have six as our longest chain, so we say hex. There's a triple bond, ein. Where does that triple bond live? It lives on carbon two. It lives on carbon two, the lower one. We have two branches on carbon four and carbon five. So we say four, five, di, and each uh, branch is made up of one carbon. So we say four, five, dimethyl, two hexine. If you recall, cyclo again means it's a ring. So here there are examples. The first one is these are skeletal forms, cyclobutene. Again, cyclo means it's a ring. Bute means there's four carbons. Ene means there is a double bond. 
And the double bond, usually you name it one, two, three, four. The double bond will be the lowest number in a ring. Just like in this case, we have cyclohexene. Ene means there's a double bond. Hex means there's six carbons in the ring. Cyclo means a ring. And il is a branch. Here's the branch. There's one carbon in that branch, and it lives on carbon three from the ring. We would not write one, two, three, four, five, six, because we want to maintain the lowest number of carbons in the ring. So why don't you pause and try to name this compound. Here, we want to find the longest chain, one, well, let's go from the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there, so we write, we will write down the word hexene, because there's seven, and I'm wrong, it should not be hex, it should be hept. Heptene. Because there's seven carbons and they're all double bonds. Where does the double bond live? It lives on carbon three. So we write three heptene. And there are two branches here on carbon two and carbon five. So we would say two five dimethyl, because there's two dimethyl. There's no need to say mono if there was only one dimethyl 3 heptene. Again, I'm going to stress this again. Please try on your own to try and uh, uh, name it without looking at the answers. Uh, just try on your own. The next one, there's one carbon, two, three, four, five. So we will write pent tine. And where does the triple bond live? It lives on carbon one. So one pentine. And then there's a branch here on number four. So we would say four methyl. One pentine. Try to draw the following compound. So we would draw octene. One, two, I'm sorry, it's a straight line. I'll draw the straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For every syllable has a meaning, so it's eight in the longest chain on carbon three. So one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight. On the longest chain, there is a double bond on carbon three, so that's the three octene. And also on the carbon three, there's a methyl. So this would be three methyl, three octene. And that matches here on the bottom is a condensed structure. I drew this skeletal form. For the next one, 1,5-diethyl cyclohexene. So let's draw the hexene. Let's draw the double bond right here. So we then this would have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On carbon 1 and 5, carbon 1, there's an ethyl. So 1, 2. And on carbon 5, there's another two carbons. So that would be our structure of 1,5-diethyl cyclohexene.